All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, as technology continues to advance, the realm of education is undergoing a transformative shift. One area, of, uh, one area at the forefront of this change is the integration of artificial intelligence into classrooms and learning environments. Now, AI has the potential to revolutionize um, education, offering personalized um, and adaptive learning experience that cater to individual students' needs. And today we are asking, um, what do you think AI is doing to um, the future of our education? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038463. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so um, I don't know. What exposure do you have with AI? I'm just learning the thing now. Um, well, we're Apart from all, TikTok. We're all learning. <laughs> we're all learning because <laughs> this is an industry that is new mm. and is growing at a fast pace. So it's it has been, it has found itself into our daily lives. Mm -hmm. So when I say how much I know about AI, so it's from, I would say it's from like Instagram. Yeah. And, you know, things like algorithms and all that, that help. Because I've noticed something like on Instagram, for example, if you watch a particular video or you go to a particular, you visit a particular page that mm -hmm. is not connected to you directly, mm. you find out that a couple of days later, you just start getting, you just look at your timeline and you just start getting like random ads or, you know, features or articles that, you know, tend towards um, pages that you visited previously. So that's, you know, it, it has gotten into different parts of our lives, even in what navigation when it comes to transportation and what have you. So, yeah, it, the much I know is very much... <laughs> But I'm learning, it's something you're learning every day. You have an idea, mm. but it's not, my idea of AI is not that in-depth, but I have So a, let me bring in our guest, Koyo J. Oluwatosin is an innovative entrepreneur with a strong passion for creative excellence. Um, he is the founder and the chief executive officer of Chronicle Software Development Company with over 1.2 million users in about 40 countries and four continents. Now, Koyo J. Jo, has developed many commercially viable solutions, which include Success, uh, Success Box, Universal Test Engine, and Success Tab. His company launched a digital classroom, ecosuccesscloud.com, for over 650 secondary schools and 700,000 students in Lagos. Koye Jo has passion for youth to teach them principles that will make them uh, peculiar and priceless. And he's joined us live in studio. Thank you so much, Koya Thank you very much. I hope I did not murder your name. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. But hey, I mean, this is interesting. 650 secondary schools, that's not a small feat at all. Yeah, uh, that's um, one of the things we did to mm. see how to create access for learning and engagement across Lagos State. Mm. Um, a kudos to His Excellency Wajide Songolu and, and the amazing team of the Commissioner, the Visayo, uh, for Lashadi and the for the great work they had done. So we partnered with them to build mm -hmm. the largest digital classroom in Africa. It wow. was launched in 2021, and currently we have over 500,000 students and 650 schools across Lagos State. Wow. So as I speak to you now, Lagos State students are preparing f for their final year exams on the cloud. So these are some other initiatives that are, that are being I'm brought jealous. to the table. I'm jealous. I'm passed, jealous. So why why is Lagos stage. State only the one benefiting from this? Why can't we have it in multiple states? Okay, yeah. I mean, apart from Lagos State, mm. um, uh, His Excellency Professor uh, Babagana Zulum is doing amazing on, at that level. They launched something Zulum similar. is what state now? That's Bonus State. Bonus state, okay. state yes. Uh, they launched Bonus State Digital School. Okay. And that's, um, you know, bringing all the entire primary and secondary schools together. So that is a borderless classroom as well, you know, classroom without walls. Then aside from that, they're implementing devices as far as, far as the not for students to use to learn and engage. And all of these things, we are embedding artificial intelligence into these Absolutely. To, to bring personalized learning, to, to improve the learning culture. And of course, it's doing a whole lot in that, in that space as well. So, I mean, Lagos is leading, but some other states are catching up very fast. And Bono State, 
I mean, it's I mean, it's fast-paced in technology deployment and and holistic learning experience for students, teachers, and the entire education ecosystem. Awesome, awesome. Let's bring it back to AI. So, <laughs> someone is looking and saying, "What is this man speaking? <laughs> it's speaking jam." I like, I don't have an idea what AI is. You know, so what exactly is AI? And you know, so when we see AI in the classroom, what does it look like in terms of experiential um, learning? Okay, so let me try and break it down. So AI is artificial intelligence. We have the natural intelligence. That's the one we have that we grow up, we can think, we can take decisions. Now, but for machines, mm -hmm. theirs is um, artificial. That means you train them using models, using algorithms. Mm. And so when you put a set of techniques together, which mm. you call algorithms, to make machines mimic human behavior, mm -hmm. it called it artificial intelligence. Mm. So, in, in, in short, you say set of techniques that you, you you design together to enable machines to mimic a human behavior. That's artificial intelligence. So, hearing you now, I'm thinking. So, if we have a fantastic lecturer, it doesn't have to be in the classroom. We'll just get a machine that looks like him, that can prepare, that can transfer the knowledge, okay. and he can teach the children, or how is it going to yeah, work? Yeah, so, so some robots can do that currently. So that's another branch of AI. So mm. AI, you have various branches. One of them is uh, machine learning, where you use sets of algorithms to train machine to take you know, decisions on their own. Mm -hmm. So before we got to AI mainstream, AI has been around since... Um, mid 60s and keeps evolving. Yes, really? yes. Uh, so, but now we have where we are right now is mainstream AI. Now, mainstream AI is such that you know me and you can engage with AI. Ten years ago, AI was very visible, but me and you were only uh, we were products of AI. People were using AI to analyze our patterns. Mm -hmm. You talked about uh, content um, recommendation, for instance. You watch a video that is not part of your content history and they are, they are suggesting more content to you. Mm. I, I remember one day I was talking on my phone. After I finished talking on my phone, I won't tell you the line I use, but when I finished talking, I got an SMS in relating with what I just talked about. And, oh, you're shocked. Say you, I won't talking on your <laughs> phone. Me, now, if I'm gisting with somebody now, I'm afraid, Good. because as I'm gisting with Absolutely. you, the next thing... You Instagram, you just your, see it pop all the sponsored ad link to. I say, how are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so, so deep is sometimes <laughs> even when your devices are switched off, they they can they are still they are still listening. Ah, the microphone. Is so on. yes, li the, li the listening component and this listening component are going into large areas of you know uh, uh, sized you know um, data warehouses where they you know, use algorithm to process the things. Every one of us have our own you know profiles identity on the cloud. Hmm. So they tell you what you like, where you can, they can predict virtually everything. Of course, you know, Google knows where you live, they know where you eat, they know where you shop, they know your schools your children attend. No, the phone you're using. They have known. The phone you're using is the default. <laughs> That's where you live. And with that, they can now channel their preferences. So the rise of, uh, you know, big uh, tech companies like Google, Facebook, that they grew from advertising ad dollars was because of all of these potentials. So they used AI and the potentials of what it brings to the table to build conglomerates, to build you know, cash generating assets. Now, where we are right now, why everybody's talking about AI, because now AI is infused into the mainstream. The advent of ChatGPT just blew everything away. Before ChatGPT, there was autonomous vehicles, driveless cars you get, but not everybody could afford a driveless car. So we're not still feeling it, but right now, We'll move from search to conversations. The best we could do on Google then was, oh, hello, uh, what's his, who is the president of Nigeria? It gives you a link and you start clicking back. Yeah. But with ChatGPT, you know, the, the, the paradigm is shifted. So what happens with ChatGPT is you just say, uh, I want to know about the history of the Biafra War. And it gives you specific details. Mm. And you cannot begin to call different actors and the role they played. And the beautiful part of the GPT right now is that it's not connected to the internet. Now, how is that going to impact education as it is and in the future? So, teachers were first scared, schools were first scared. It's going to help you. you everybody needs to stay abreast with technology. Everybody needs to move with the times. 
Everybody needs to adapt from teachers to students to schools. So we as technology companies, what we do is to leverage technology to see how to improve experiences for students, for teachers, and for the administrators and the entire education ecosystem. Now, with, with AI in the, in the party, things like personalized learning is going to continue to get better by the day. So one of the things we did for one of the states we work with, we were able to tell them what their work is all to look like before it came out. Hmm. And that's one of the things AI brings to the table. And with, with, with almost 99.9% nine, .9 precision, and say, okay, this is X number of thousands of students are writing in WIAC. This is what we see in the trend. This is how your results will look like. And when the WIAC result came out, the, the aggregate you know, scores was just about near it. Hmm. And that, that's the potential. And that's going to continue to go. So what we're doing in-house in our company is trying to see, you don't need to wait to the end of the term to see your child's report card. So we are generating what we call weekly report cards. So you're analyzing the strength of your child week by week. And it gives everybody the feedback on so how... So it gives you an idea, an idea where they need the to improve real, on whilst real time, it's quite early. Real time. So I can see the impact. Yes, real time. But so. does it, wouldn't that have some... Okay, so for me, when it comes to things like this, I have my... Reservations. You know, reservations. Why? Because um, how do you authenticate... Like, how do you... Is, what, what happens to the security of the data? The data that is being analyzed. And then where does... For me, where does bias come in? Bias. Yes, That's when it comes data to data brokers, you mean? Yes. Okay. So when it comes to some of these companies, use um, yes, the algorithms and the data gotten from that from you know individuals is actually supposed to be as pure as possible. Uh, but um, you realize that some companies have started to you know manipulate some of these data to their benefit. Like clearly, we were talking about Instagram. So one of those things, you know, there and where the security of the individual protection come in. of my data. Yes, okay. where does it come okay. in? So if my my phone can, you know, record anything I'm saying and use it against me or for me. Okay, most times for you. <laughs> okay, so uh, data brokerage has been for a long time. So where so anytime you use a free product, you are the product that that company is selling. So anytime you use a free product that you are not paying, majority of the time, you are the product they are selling. So whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. Now, have you ever tried go to the uh, privacy policy for Facebook? Go and read it. And you'll be shocked about what you're going to see. Go and read privacy for WhatsApp. And in that document, you'll be shocked about the leverage you're giving them with your data. Mm. So when you click on that button, that's why they update the policy regularly to suit the changing business dynamics and also protecting themselves. They can share your photos, they can do whatever they want to do with it that because you are there. And, and so, you choose the platform. Yeah, you choose they the platform. They will send you. And <laughs> yes. So now Simple. for, for ETEC companies, now many of the solutions are proprietary. Government's paying, parents are paying, students are paying. So protecting that data is of utmost importance to all the players. So, and again, the beautiful side of things is that the people that sell your data, they know how to protect your data. Mm. So all the data are in the cloud. Mm. So it's just the policy that you, settings that you put on your cloud architecture. Yeah. We have a cloud service right now that, has, that can stay six, 10, 10 million students concurrently on the cloud. Mm. So we, we might not have enough money to build classrooms. That's where scalability, AI tools, personalized learning come to the party. And with that kind of massive tech infrastructure, where you have 10 million students learning concurrently, the possibilities are endless. So Absolutely. that's that's what comes, you know, to the party. Mm -hmm. We talked about Lagos is onboarding 500,000. Before the end of the year, Bonu State will do 1.5 million students. We are already in talks with um, His Excellency and his team. Uh, about three years ago, he set up the Education Trust Fund, uh, and they have been doing amazing things in scholarships and in a whole lot of devices to students and, and the likes. And, and I'm sure that other states will also cash in as well. Now, what that is also going to do for us as a country is that we should not make the mistake we made in the third industrial revolution. Mm. 
In the third industrial revolution, we sat down and we're clapping our hands when we were able to browse the internet. Oh, like, in fact, those of us that had church background, they said, oh, that's www. Don't go there, oh, it's the yes, worldwide yes, yes. dishes. <laughs> it's good. So, you know, so everybody stayed back. Mm. And, you know, and while we stayed back, the you world know, moved on. The world moved on. Mm. And when we got on, it was really late. Mm. But now the fourth industrial revolution gives everybody a level playing field. AI yeah, is just entering America the market. is moving, Nigeria mm -hmm. is moving. Mm -hmm. They have designers, who, in fact, globally speaking, Nigerians have one of the best designers in the world, not just Africa. We stand side by side with America, with India. In fact, check out the software that come out of, 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 of the world. Designers from Nigeria, they know they are, they are top notch. Mm. So as, they are, as America is moving, Africa is also moving, Nigeria is also moving. Technology is a leveler. So what we are doing as a technology company that we're focused on education is try to help students not just engage technology, but also master the technology to provide solutions last mile. Absolutely. I love that. And on that note, let's go on a very short break. When we come back from the break, we'll continue this amazing conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic, exploring right the impact of artificial intelligence on the future of education, especially here in Nigeria. Now we have Koyejo Oluwatosin with us. Now remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Weisho Africa one the hashtag Weisho. So I liked where you you landed before we went on the break when you talked about how. You know, it's not just learning again, because again, the, the challenge I think I have, you know, I studied physics in school. I'm supposed to be a hands-on kind of person. I love experiments. I love all of those things. I'm, so imagine you studying something and you're not even exposed to even creating a small circuit mm. for the four years of university. I, didn't, I don't know how to create a small circuit, just to create, join wire together and nothing, right? And this cuts across all kinds of learning, even with the, what's it called, com people studying computers that have never cited a computer and all of that. So I want to understand this, the scalability of this AI now, you know, being infused in education. You know, how would it truly change the face of education? Because again, um, it's not like we are there, you know, in terms of how it should run. I'll give an example. I have my young nieces and nephews. How old are they? Seven and six, right? Um, coming into um, year one in primary school. They are coming, they are coming with a laptop. Mm, they already have, you know, <laughs> in fact, this one is even laptop they gave them. Proper Dell laptop, wow. you know. Primary one. Primary one. And I'm wondering, ha, this cannot happen in Nigeria. First of all, the, the, because they've got the poverty message, some people will go and sell it. And, and you know, yeah. you know, there's a lot, you know, that's, that's happening. Because I, I organize board game tournament for children. And part of what we give them as a reward system, we give them laptops. We give them so that they can probably learn coding and start up a, a career. So how do we translate AI into, first of all, soft skills for these children? How do they begin to see themselves beyond just saying I'm just learning to cram to pass to now being part of what you just said about building you know so future solutions being the future Mark Zuckerberg and all of that how would this impact education in that light okay so um, let me start by saying that um, we are we're not fully there yet, but we are making loads of progress there and one of the first benefits of AI to the um, education ecosystem is that um, it will help to enhance, you know, student outcomes. It will help teachers to better teach content creatively. It will help, you know, it will enhance and improve classroom engagement to a very high level. Then more than that, it will also help to provide some very top-notch, you know, in-depth an analytics of um, student performance, behavior and outcomes and the likes. So going back to where you said, how do we scale this process? First and foremost, we, we need to have uh, what we we'll call uh, the frontline technologies. One of them is, you know, internet penetration across, across, because these are things that um, AI is going to sit on, from 4G technology to 5G technology and the likes. Mm -hmm. These are, yes, then we also need to have devices as well. So 
one of the things we as, as a company is doing is trying to make you know devices as affordable as possible. We pioneered tablets called Success Tab, and we started that in 2013. Okay. We went to the market in 2016, so we are one of the leading educational tablet brands in the country. We have you know national spread, and what these tablets do is phenomenal. It's an advanced learning tablet. It, it digitizes the entire learning experiences of a child from primary school to secondary school. All the resources they need to learn is preloaded on the tablet and it's offline. And it has what they call the parental control mechanisms inbuilt. Hmm. The browsers we use on Success Tab, you know, shuts down all adult content by default. So uh, giving parents the confidence to be able to engage, allow their, uh, their world to engage this, uh, uh, these systems. Because while we are also promoting, you know, the good, there are also people that are pushing the bad and the ugly sides of this technology. Then when you have these, you know, frontline technologies I talked about, internet penetration, then devices, then the next thing are the solutions that those devices will sit on. Now, those solutions are, we talked about solutions for classroom engagement, which is fine. Then solutions that will help the school if effectively run and track student outcomes. We have solutions that will, you know, help the teachers to deliver um, I mean, effective tal um, content. Then we now have the solutions to empower the child. Well, mm. Let's go back to first principles. What's education? Mm. That's where we miss it most times. Education, in our own definition, which is popular, is the empowerment of the mind. Now, when the mind is empowered, the mind is empowered Limitless. To That's it. Thank you very much. Become limitless. So, and when we understand that it's about the mind, then we now begin to curate content to ensure that we empower that mind to live up to its full potentials. Now, a lot of things has to change going forward, and the government needs to be very drastic. This, they started a good move day before yesterday, yesterday. I don't know if you heard the news. Uh, private open universities were licensed, about a few of them. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like a good step. I, I, I say fine, but I won't applaud that totally, meaning that open universities concept has been around for a while. And that is not the kind of concept we need in the digital era. We need digital first universities, data only universities, whereby they can provide skill sets to power the next generation to fit in into this world. Mm. And don't forget, we are in the data age, but the data age is winding up mm. gradually. So, and when an age is going to wind up, it's only visionary, some visionaries that get to see it before it comes. Mm. And when they get to see it before it comes, they provide you know, technology solutions to fit into the future. Before the world arrives there, they've dominated the market. We should be able to teach the next generation how to see the future. Mm. And if we don't do that, we will continue to wait for handouts and wait mm. for people to give us aid. But, we'll forever be backward. Yeah, but to train the child to see the future is not rocket science. Just constantly expose them. And that mind will think 10, 20 steps beyond what exposure you give to them. If you put a tablet in the hand of a 6-year-old or a 10-year-old, mm. you will think you've seen it all. Give them two weeks. They will be 10 times better than you on your devices. That's the potential of the mind they carry. We think we have seen it all, but in the hands of these children, it's infinite. Mm. The possibilities are endless. So we need to constantly create those solutions to empower their mind. And to empower their mind, you now begin to say, towards skills and what will artificial intelligence do? What we're also trying to do also is this. We are in a crisis, and I don't think an, op an open university will solve that crisis, whereby you write jam examination. We have... The, the essence of these new universities is to create openings for a lot of people. Fine, more people will come into universities, right? But if you look at the current system today, about 1.92 million students write jam every year, and only about 400, 600,000 people gain admission. Now, out of people that will gain admission into these universities, only less than 40% will get the choice that they desire. So the 60% will go into another four years into courses they are not inspired about, into courses they are not passionate about, 
and it's, some of them will just be frustrated in four years, they just need to bag a degree because they give them a job. Mm. If we keep that mentality going, education goes backward. Mm. But if we go back to first principles, why do we need to go to school? We want to go to school because we want to empower our mind, because we want to create solutions. And we now begin to tilt the mind of the students towards in that direction. Whereby, first and foremost, you need to know what you are good at. And that's where AI comes in. Mm. You see before a profile lab test, you do some, you know, some curated... IQ, EQ yes, test. There's yeah. IQ, EQ, mm -hmm. curated. It digs deep into your personality, asks you questions, and in a month, it tells you what you're cut out to do. It, it, it goes into what's your personal mission statement, what's your vision, mm. what's your purpose, what do you really like to do. Hmm. Some people are not driven by money. Some people just want to make impact. Hmm. Some want to become billionaires. Tell me about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So because <laughs> of all of this, so... Be because of all of these, there are some courses prefer, that you can just study in line yeah. with what, what you, you want to do. Yeah. Some people don't want to make noise at all. Mm. There are some world, ultra wealthy Nigerians that, if you want to put their names on the paper, yeah, they but, can arrest you. Mm. They don't want to be in the head. That's how they are, that's their makeup. That's, they they want to work behind the scene. Some want to be very, very visible. Mm. Now, if we put a, that system that helps everybody understand what, where they want to be, the system becomes stronger. Mm the mind of the people becomes more empowered. And all of these systems at scale, it, it might not be able to have, only be the best of the best schools can afford it, but with artificial intelligence and the party, with all these legacy systems and good applications, we can scale this, these tools that help people to find their true knots, mm. help people to find their true purpose. And we are working on something in that direction, whereby everybody understands what they want to be and they begin to you know it's, 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 and, and begin to walk towards it you know you know uh, step by step it's just tailored just tailored mm. right for the uh, for you for me mm. oh wow that's a lot there's a lot, <laughs> that's a lot of information honestly so it tells me that um there's something mm. to look out for here in, in um, artificial intelligence but i was just gonna ask you right um what would be the biggest challenge that we would face in nigeria if we were to deploy full so if the government just wakes up tomorrow and says Koyejo, this thing that you've been talking about eh, we we want to scatter everywhere we want to go all out we want to make it happen and all of that so what would be the biggest um roadblock that you see would it be our data i mean sorry our internet provider would it be what exactly would be what would impede um, the, the exponential growth of AI in education today? I would say it's localization, content localization. Okay. So we, there is not enough Hausa, Ibo, Yoruba up there. Mm. We need to build our systems to translate, transcribe these things real time. Mm. I mean, you can learn Spanish and French on a click. Well, on Duolingo. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, on, even, even on con conversation style, mm -hmm. you can chat with somebody that has not heard English language mm. real time. And there's a system that does that. We, as technology people here in this country, we need to domesticate those kind of solutions mm -hmm. here. Whereby you have, you know, you don't need to speak English to be educated. Absolutely. We need to know that. You don't need to speak. Yes, if you speak Hausa properly, you speak Igbo properly, and you are educated, you will still provide service. Mm -hmm. With this kind of interface tools, you don't need to force a child to know how to read English. You, what you need to do is your numeracy and your literacy. It doesn't have to be English, but you can communicate effectively. And when you communicate effectively, so when you, when you domesticate these tools, everybody can now access opportunities, not because they speak English, but because they can communicate, whether through an in interface, through intermediary, and things are happening real time. Mm -hmm. So the artisan comes to your house. Yes, you cannot communicate with him properly, but he gets, gets his job done, and you're satisfied. Mm -hmm. And you pay the agency, he takes his cut, and he goes. So one, of, one other barrier. Then also, too, when you're talking about technology, we shouldn't rush it. I don't, okay. yeah, we take it, yes, we take it, uh, uh, we take it um, one step at a time. There's a phase where we call them, um, you know, the rollout phase. You know, you do what they call the pilot phase. Okay, what impact are you looking at? Choose a section of society, choose a section of the country, uh, maybe 10 schools across, you know, um, uh, geopolitical sure. zones about, about our, or across local government and get those data. Now, those data, analyze those data and use those data not to do what they call widespread adoption. So you go from the early adopters, you go from hmm. the late majority, 
you go from the uh, the, uh, uh, oh no, the, the from early adopters to the late majority, mm. and by so doing, you have what called widespread acceptance. Now the problem today is, or oh, you wake up and say, let everybody go this direction. It comes with its 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 issues. But when you understand it from the grassroots, say you take it piece after piece, a pilot program after pilot program, it, it goes a long way. Let me uh, uh, say a few thoughts about the data age and the connected age before I begin to you know, close my conversation. Uh, so right, right now we're in the fourth industrial revolution. Like I said, it's, it's already trying to you know, like, you know, uh, make way for the fifth industrial revolution. And I call that the connected age. So if you look at systems, that we, if you have, if you have a, a call credit on your phone and you don't have data, for 30 minutes, it's as if the world has left you behind. Mm -hmm. And we are in that age whereby we are connected. I hardly use my call credit anymore. Absolutely. Everybody does data calls, Ev data so, this. So we are in that phase mm. where everything is seamlessly connected. And the possibilities of the connected age brings a whole new level of opportunities, which if we can muster those uh, skill sets, put in the hands of the children, provide necessary technology to scale, before you know it, we'll become leaders in this space. Hmm. We've demonstrated a lot of companies that have done massively well in hmm. education, at whether lifelong learning, whether reskilling, whether continuous teachers development, AI will play a leading role going forward. Then I predict Classroom 7.0. OK, what's that? The teacherless, <laughs> the teacherless class. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of teachers don't but what would be the challenge for teacherless class? Now? Okay, so the teacherless class just means that you know technology will compete for the same space. Now as they tell you, say we, we know as we know, can't get light now. Okay. You know, say, <laughs> would we have solved that problem? Okay, would so, it impact? So, so there's there's this growth in um, mm -hmm. you know renewable energy and you know backup alternative power supply absolutely where you can deploy to rural yeah, areas. Yeah, solar and solutions and there's all. There's this advert MTN did. Hmm. of recent about somebody that was doing marriage in absentia. Yes. yes Get that's a teacherless class coming with you. Oh. You need one good teacher staying in one location and you can teleport that image to Multiple thousands classrooms. of locations. And when they are to ask questions, they just need to put in a chat bot and she will respond one person after the other hmm. in a very eccentric style. Hmm. And it might not be a human being. Now what? Uh, we are, not, we are not far away. <laughs> ah, this is interesting. Ha. Hey, Joe, you're going to teach us more about this. <laughs> so I'm just thinking in my head, how can I become, what, where's the business in it for me? <laughs> not true that. Let us no, position no. ourselves. Yes, there is. So, the, where, so for someone thinking to invest in artificial intelligence, you know, towards the future of education, where, what, what are the Let investment be. opportunities? That's a very good question. Um, in fact, I'm just going to charge you for that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so first and foremost, you want to ask yourself, where do I want to make the most impact? Or where mm. do you think the technology will make the most impact? One of them is, you know, student improvement, you know, outcomes improvement. I'm telling you, I like Government that. Governments like to hear mm -hmm. all that. I mean, I mean, oh, your, your school or the entire state is making 35% overall grades. But if you do ABC, it will jump to 30%, it's so over 65%. Yeah. That's a demonstrated technology. So if you have that solution needs together, like we already have, I mean, a lot of people would like to hear you as well. Mm. Uh, of course, the investors will be looking for you because you have demonstrated a lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, let's say, a goodwill in that, in that respect. And then also, too, we also need to look at disruption. You know, higher education disruption, it's another place to look at. Uh, the government tried to do a private open university. Fine, but I think that a lot of things are going to happen that will not even require government to back. Mm -hmm. And because, yeah, so at that point in time, what we want to do is that we want to demonstrate learning has happened. Mm -hmm. And if learning happens, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The, the guys going abroad to take a job, some of them didn't read computer science in school. Mm -hmm. A good number of them were self-taught. I have someone, a student that was engaging in one of the schools where we have our software. He was building massive solutions in SS2. Mm. It was not his teacher that taught him. He was self-taught. Mm. Today, he runs an, a, a fintech company with about four branches in Africa. Mm. I even had he dropped out of university. If you see him, he's on, he's on the go. He's, these are gifted hmm. geniuses. 
Hmm. Today is in Kenya, today is in the US. He set up shop. He set up offices. In fact, when I saw him, he was in Transcorp. He brought his entire team to Transcorp for lunch. Hmm. And I was like, oh, really? So, so the great thing yeah, is volume. that you start in time to yeah. actually catch up. We've run out of time. Oh, yeah, quickly. <laughs> um, good to see you on Ways. Kuyojo. Mm -hmm. This is Simeon. Proud of you always, man. Okay. Oh, Simeon, thank you very much. Thank Simeon. you, Simeon. Thank you, thank you. We can't take any other messages. Thank you so much, Kuyojo. We've had a fantastic conversation. There's one more question I want to ask about Nera and Kobo because it's looking like something's okay, going to happen. We'll, we'll take it offline. <laughs> we'll take it offline. <laughs> but thank you so much. You've been an amazing and very, very informative guest. Mm. All right, we'll see. Um, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wisho Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Our intelligence is what makes us human, and AI is an extension of that quality. It's as simple as that. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.